understand when we were looking at um, water in the brake lines is we saw that we're going to have dirty brake fluid because it's going to rust all the steel components in the um, brake system. That's one thing, but the other thing you need to understand is la esponga, right? The sponge. Okay, look. Typically, when we see a spongy pedal is when we have what? Air in the brake lines. Good. Okay, but sometimes you can bleed the brakes, bleed the brakes, bleed the brakes, and you're not going to get rid of a spongy pedal. Now, there is a certain spongy pedal that you have to be aware of that's associated with having water in the lines. And it's a spongy pedal when the brakes get hot. The brakes work fine until they get hot, and then all of a sudden you get spongy pedal. Why? Because the brakes get very hot. I mean, it's not, it's not unusual for those rotors to get orange. So we're talking about huge amounts of heat. Which get hotter, disc brakes or drum brakes? Yes. Disc brakes is correct. Is that why disc brake grease is higher temperature than drum brake grease? Probably. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Uh, uh, can I say something? You just did. The guy from the... Uh, uh, <laughs> Caravan? Yeah, the caravan, mm -hmm. the, the rotors, they were overheated. I can see the marks. Yeah, they were look strange looking, weren't they? Yeah. That's what happened. Okay, what causes that, puppy? Um, lug nuts. The, the, the wheel lug nuts tight to tight. Yeah, the wheel lug nuts on backwards. Yeah. Oh, that's not me though. Somebody I'm the one that noticed that. Over tight, over tight, uh, I don't know who told you about it. I saw all that. You no, know, it's cheap brake pads. Oh, cheap brake pads? Yeah, cheap brake pads. $10 dollar brake pads. I mean, that happens all the time. That's why, you know, one of the things we do when people come in here is we say... Semi-metallic or, or organic or what is the most... Usually organic, because organic's made out of tree bark. Mm -hmm. Really, literally, it's made out of tree bark. So as a result, you got to push them a lot harder to get the car to stop. Yeah. So, that's one of the things I like about being here is that, you know, we save money on labor and all the money we save on labor we can spend on good parts, right? Yeah. Because after all, you should be doing your brakes more than once or three every every three years or so anyway. Yeah. Right? So buy the good stuff and don't worry about it. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. So, my point was that Water in the brake lines causes spongy pedal after they get hot, because, after the brakes get hot. And the reason is because you have water in your brake line and it just acts like any other liquid until it gets hot enough to boil. And when it gets hot enough to boil, what does water do? It turns from a liquid into a gas, gas vapor. a vapor, just like air, right? Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden when you step on the brakes, you're going to get spongy pedal. What's the, what's the uh, fix for that? The fix for you Change the, 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 the um, Remove, remove all the old fluid. Exactly. Yeah. And I think a couple of you have seen my method on that. It's a really, really good method. Yeah. You know, just go down to the, uh, El Superior. I saw a, a little pump on the TV the other day. They, like, it's like a pump that sucks. Oh, the, the posi <laughs> back? Exactly. For problemas del, del matrimonio? <laughs> <laughs> what channel? Problemas <laughs> matrimonios? Teacher, it's, it's a problem when, when you are confused, uh, you put it in the, in the reservoir, the, the brake fuel, uh, you put it in uh, the steering... Oh, yeah, because that's oil. Power steering. No, power steering fluid that's, is oil. That's petroleum products. That's petroleum. That means you got to replace all the rubber in the system. After that. More danger oh. than, than water. Super dangerous, oh, right. yeah, because it makes all the rubber swell. Okay. Petroleum was false. So. Is this your confession? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, that's actually because the last time I, I saw one uh, one customer, uh, everything the the, the brake, everything is packed. Mm -hmm. Can move We replace all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And you gotta flush it and flush it yeah. and flush it and flush it, yeah, forever. Stuck in, stuck in, the car is can, can move. Right, because all the seals swell up and they lock inside the cylinders. Yeah? What? The calipers also will yeah. lock up? Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, the yeah. calipers.
based on something. Wow, so how much is that? Just a little oh, mistake. Like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Six hundred dollars. Just a little mistake of somebody who doesn't put attention and he created a big problem. That's why my my question is why in power steering is that different? Very. Okay. Yeah, uh, power steering is just oil. It's okay. transmission fluid, basically. Yeah. Automatic transmission fluid. What? No, really about the spongy one, and they said they could also be caused by a, a false re uh, pressure valve. Well, let me just tell you, the big problem people have with spongy pedal that will not go away is that they don't bench bleed the master cylinder before they install it. This master cylinder right here, ah, everybody laughs at my suffering, really? I just smile. <laughs> we were laughing I, with I, you, I, I not at you. Your, uh, I, I, live, I love for your stupidity, not for your suffering. <laughs> we're, we're laughing with you, not at you. <laughs> this thing gets mounted like this. Where is the air going to go in this system? The front. To the right here, right here. If you don't get the air out when it's this way, once it's this way, never. you'll never get the air out. The bubble will never come out. Now, the bubbles. The air is generally going to go to the place that has the lowest pressure, which is why when you open up these valves and you step on the brake, the bubbles are going to tend to come out. But the thing is, if they're up here, there's there's really no way they're going to travel down here. What, David? So you just have to sorry, so you just have to worry with a cylinder that goes in this position, the one that goes um, completely horizontal. You don't have to worry. Better? Only those ones. You better. You better okay. because it's a lot easier to bleed bench. It's a lot easier to bleed brakes on the bench than it is in the car. Oh, Way easier. Okay, my customer comes in. I go ahead. I bleed on my check and I check the bearings and everything. I do all the whole checking funny thing and it continues to do it. Would I? Would it be proper for me to go ahead and take it off and go ahead and re bleed that, or would it be proper to go ahead and replace it all over and re bleed? It? Can I, would it be for still, spongy pedal? Spongy pedal is going to be air in the system. Yeah, but, but say say I did all the other procedures, and I believe that that would be my last. That I would turn and look at the reservoir, and I would have a slack to it. And I would, I would, would, I, would it be okay for me to take it off and bleed just the master cylinder, or would I have to replace it off? Like that wouldn't make any sense. Why it would all of a sudden have that problem? Mm -hmm. But if they had just replaced this, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all right. So then it would only make sense if it's been tampered with. Right, which is why. Because then what it do all the way the air would get into a master cylinder on this. Been tampered right, with, right, there you go. go. Which right. is why, remember I tell you all the time, visual inspection. Don't, don't get out the tools. Yeah. Don't get all technical. Just open up the hood and start looking around. Okay, what's recently been replaced? Mm -hmm. You know? And when you see that, you see, okay, they've got a brand new master cylinder, and now they have brake problems. Mm. See, the thing is, a lot, of these customers, a lot of these customers will not tell you what they just had done. <laughs> Especially, okay, number one, because they think that you're going to rip them off or something. Number two, because they don't see the relationship between, say, a vacuum line and the way the transmission shifts. So, you got to be your own detective, because... People don't understand. Well, sometimes they say they change the booster, and then the engine is, rough, is uh, uh -huh. running rough. Yeah. They say, why? I changed the brakes. I didn't do anything to the engine. Right. But the vacuum leak is... Mm -hmm. the vacuum. Yeah. yeah. Now, the problem is, like we had today, Moses tried to do a diagnostic interview with the customer. Oh, are the brakes okay? Well, sometimes they feel kind of hard. What? The problem is, you know, if... If I, ask, if I ask you if you're tired right now, if I ask you if you're tired right now, sometimes. <laughs> if I was to ask you if your feet hurt or your back hurt, you'd say, yeah, yeah, kind of. But, you know, sometimes you it ain't. Right? It's just it's the power of suggestion. So I say, yeah, exactly. So I say, you know, if your brakes are hard, you should. That's good, right? What the hell? So, <laughs> if they work, then you're good. In conclusion, if you see a master cylinder replaced and you have a spongy uh, master cylinder, better take it out and 
Yes. Or, or like another, Basically. probably like another better way of saying it, like it wouldn't be wrong to, to imagine, like to you know to think that that could Just be start a problem. <laughs> I mean, I'm like stupid at you. You're you stupid, mama. Who would you take to? <laughs> I'm kidding, bro. She brought it to me from the get go. Let me see. Obviously, it's more to the left now. Did he just do that? What? Did he get a straight ahead? Well, you think you're cool because you printed it out or what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool because I got it in the middle and I printed it out. No, wait a second. This is the before and this is the after. But it was already a straight ahead. No, it wasn't, was it? How come it said right here? See? Oh, now the toe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I wasn't even getting a lecture on brakes tonight, but I had to get Moses out of the picture. <laughs> Scandalous! Uh, that's what it was. <laughs> No. You gotta help your fellow white man. Uh, <laughs> Daryl Lopez? No, I'm talking about him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> talking about <laughs> Moses. <laughs> Daryl, is that his name Lopez? Oh, so he's, a, he's Paisa, huh? Oh, he's Mexican. Paisa. No, yeah, sorry, everyone except me. Paisa. Huh? Yeah, everyone except me. Oh. No, he's, that, he's, he's not Paisa. Paisa. I made a conversion. <laughs> I made a conversion like Moses as of today. No. You know all the hippies, how they said we had to get out of Vietnam because we had no point in being there? Right. After we left Vietnam, Pol Pot became the leader of Cambodia. He you killed went to Vietnam. Shh. He killed two million people in one year. You have any idea? That's like 35,000 people a day. Or a week. Whatever it is, it's a lot. Yeah. You know why? Because the United States left all those people, and see, and everyone said, oh, we're such good people now, we have peace, because we brought the army home, and all those Cambodians got slaughtered, and you know how many people cared? Freaking hippies. This many. So the it's Vietnamese, a sin. The Vietnamese killed the Cambodian people? No, it's Cambodians. It's Cambodians. Pol Pot. Pol Pot. Pol Pot. I blame it on the hippies. Yeah, because they have like a two pounds, you know. Right. I blame it on the hippies. Now, wait, here's the, here's the, here's the next part. You were okay, part so, <laughs> the Vietnamese started running out of Vietnam because they were scared because Ho Chi Minh was going to, well, it wasn't Ho Chi Minh because he died. Pol Pot, the same thing. They were scared too because what they did, after we left Vietnam, they took everyone who spoke English, who had a college degree, who had any friends who were English, who ever worked for the Americans, they took them all from their homes and their families in the <laughs> south, and they pushed them up north Vietnam, and they made them like build bridges with wheelbarrows and shovels. These are guys that are you know professors, they got master's degrees, and that's how they, it's basically genocide. Now, you wanna know the number one reason they could pull that off? What did they have to do first to put all those people in slavery? Kill all take people in take away their cars? That is incorrect. What's the first step to making someone a slave? <laughs> Take <laughs> away their, their, their liberty, security, their guns, their bra right. right to bear arms. Their guns. And yeah. Yeah, that's what's going on with the Sandy Hooks. That was all a hoax. Because you understand, the more shooting, the more tragic events is, is what is what they want to do here in the United States. Huh? That is correct. You got to take away the straps. But people say, oh, that could never happen here. We're filled with nice people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And that's why he's strapped up. Right, that's why you stock it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, remember? Uh, McDonald's, so anyway, quote, my point was, quote. I need to stock up. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to go hit up the homies. We got to go hit up the homies Before real fast. Bad, <laughs> we gotta go stock up and prepare. Stock up with your... No. <laughs> the point I was trying to make was just a little liberty moment. Let me tell you, you want to talk to people who know how to be freaking poor? See, you guys think Mexicans are poor? No. You got to realize, I had a bunch of boat people from Vietnam in my class. 
In a 24-foot boat, they had 420 people. That's how desperate they were to get away from the I think, you know, uh, North Vietnamese. You know, actually, I think it has it worse than is, them uh, is the Cuban. Nothing. No. no. North yeah. Koreans. Cuba's nice yeah. compared to Asia. No, no. But I think I think like the way they have to try to escape from there. Yeah, from, 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 well, from, they're all be coming here. You mean to you mean to come to the United States? Yeah, like you know, and they like and they got it easy once they get here because they know like they have your papers and everything, you know. But but I'm sorry, I think I think they got it pretty rough more than just to make it over here. They'll probably die in the process. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. I met I met it. It's a lot them. easier to get here from Cuba than it is from Vietnam. Anyway, my point was, so they're out there in the in the in the South China Sea, 420 people on a 24-foot boat. Do the math. That's not very. That's like from here to there, 400 people in this boat. They're all over each other, right? So all the old people are dying, right? So what they had to do was, they had to slit the the veins of the people who were dying, and they had to drink their blood because after all, there was no water. And they'd be out there on the boat. How are you gonna be in a boat with no water? <laughs> Because Yo, all they no wanted to do is get away from Vietnam. This is a true story. There's no room for it. Plus, you're doing it. You have no quick. choice. You have no choice. You have no choice. You've got no time to do anything. And so then, here's the best part. And here come the pirates, right? Real pirates. So the pirates come in, and they rape all the women, and they pull all the gold out of everybody's mouth, and then they leave, and then you're still out there in the China Sea because you got no gasoline. You ran out of gasoline. You don't have any water. And here come the pirates again. Which is why when they finally landed on the shores of Thailand, the first thing they did was they jumped out of the boat and they started smashing holes in the boat because when they got to Thailand, the Thailand police went, push your back. Yeah. Shit. Awful, awful, awful. The things people are capable of doing to each other are Hello, Sancho. Really? Really? Yeah. Man's inhumanity to man is unfathomable. So what they would do is they get out and they start destroying the shit. Yeah. To make yeah. sure they ain't going nowhere. Right. <laughs> right. Like yeah. Game. People say, how can you how can you believe in God after the Holocaust? Right? After all those Jews got killed? In the wind. Yes? Yes. People say, how can you believe in God? A better question is, how can you believe in people? Right? Yeah. Tell me about it. People kill, kill people. Guns don't kill people. Yeah, people yeah. kill people. I believe in God a lot, but I'm just saying, like, you know, that's what, how you really, like, a real crazy. Like, if you only really want to talk to somebody, like, down the oh, well, because I can see them fucking killing people. Like, I can believe that they're monsters, you know? They don't care. Well, I'll tell you, you know, they ran all those guns in Mexico. It killed, what, four or five hundred Mexicans? You really think that 25 white kids are more important than 400 Mexicans? I don't. But nobody cared, right? Yeah. It's a couple of thousands in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. They killed the border patrol agent with a gun that they ran into Mexico on purpose. They did, yeah. Those I hate people. <laughs> Except you guys. So the point I was trying to make was that. You good on that? Okay, parking brake. Here's the thing. Parking brake has an adjustment. I don't adjust it ever. Here's why. Me 